Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to this online service. Uh, whatever time you're watching us from, I uh, want to thank the Lord that you've taken the time to join us and to, you know, be with us, worship with us today. So we want to welcome you. We want to start off by reading a scripture here. Uh, Psalms 23 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the paths for his, uh, along the right path for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Then he says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Do you have any enemies? Oh, yeah. God will prepare Little a table, them. hallelujah. <laughs> then he says, he anoints my head with oil. Uh, my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and your love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I would like the goodness and the, and the, and the uh, mercies of the Lord to follow me oh, yeah. all the days of my life. And that's a good promise that God is saying to us. That surely his goodness and his love will follow you all the days of your life. So wherever you are, I want to invite you you to join us in worship uh, but before we begin let's pray father we thank you for allowing us to see this day to come into your presence with thanksgiving to enter your courts with praise oh lord lord we want to honor you today we want to lift up your holy name because you are indeed worthy of being all to oh god so bless us as we worship you as we listen to the word today be with us in jesus name we pray and all god's students say amen 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 Ni 
nataka nyumbani mwa Bwana siku zote za maisha yangu Amen amen and that's the promise of God that surely goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our lives and we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Uh, we thank you for just joining us again. We want to transition into a time of giving. And uh, even as we go into a time of giving, the word of the Lord says in 2 Corinthians 9, chapter 9, verse 6 to 8, it says, remember this, remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also, sow, will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Then it encourages and says, each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly, not under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Amen? Amen. God loves a cheerful giver. And I love what it continues to say. It says, and God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, will abound in every good work. Amen. Amen. So even as we continue to give, remember this. If you sow sparingly, you will reap sparingly. But if you sow generously, you will also reap generously. And whatever you've decided in your heart today to give, the details are all below the screen there. Whatever you've decided, do it as unto the Lord. Because God says, not grudgingly, not under compulsion, no one here is forcing you but God says he loves a cheerful giver. So I want to encourage you to do it in a cheerful way because we know that God is the one who has actually given us. In fact, the Bible says that it is God who gives us the ability to create wealth. Yeah. So even as we give to him today, as we do it in a cheerful way, I pray that God will indeed bless you. And he continues to say, and God is able to, you know, bless you abundantly so that in all things and at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. So I pray that even as you give, may you also abound in every good work that you're doing. May God continue to bless the works of your hand. May He continue to, you know, provide opportunities for you to create even more wealth, hallelujah, to support the work of God and to support the mission that we are. So we want to thank you again for uh, joining us uh, for this service today. I hope you're prepared. I hope your hearts are prepared to listen to the word of the Lord today. It is brought to us by Pastor Fred. So I hope you're ready and ready to receive. So God bless you as you listen to the word. From me and Max Safari. Peace. Tonane. Badai. Praise God. It gives me great joy to share this uh, short devotional uh, with you. And I want to read from the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 17. The Bible says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. Behold, everything has become new. I mean, the question is, how does the gospel uh, change my life? That is what we are talking about today. How does the gospel change my life? And reading from this verse, it is very clear that if anyone becomes a believer, their life uh, changes. And so the question is, how does this person change their lives what happens what changes do we do we see in someone's life when they begin when they become a believer and i want us to just look at a few examples in the bible people who when they encountered jesus something in their lives uh, changed the first one is the disciples um, they were going about their business fishing and uh, their other activities but here comes uh, jesus they meet jesus and uh, something in them changes you know, they leave their businesses, they abandon their businesses, and they start following Christ. And if you look at how these guys died, they died very painful, excruciating deaths. But it is something that in their lives uh, changed, that they decided, you know, I can trade my life for, for the sake of Christ. Something changed. We look at the thief on the cross. You know, that very last moment when he was just about to die, he looks at Jesus and he realizes that this is not a normal person. And he tells him that, I mean, remember me. I mean, if you cross to the other side of heaven, remember me. And Christ indeed remembers the thief. Look at Paul. 
you know, a very passionate prosecutor of the church, you know, with zeal and he killed people. But he encounters Jesus. And with the same passion and zeal and commitment, he now serves a Christ. Something in his life changes. Another person is Zacchaeus, you know, the tax collector. Um, he encounters Jesus. He invites Jesus into his house. And, you know, the conversation goes and again something in this guy's life changes. He tells Jesus that the things he has taken from other people in the wrong way, I mean, in not a nice way, he's willing to refund, return, not once, but even three times up to what he had uh, taken from people. Something in his life uh, changed. Another example is the woman at the well. Uh, this episode where Jesus meets this woman at the well. And she's asking Jesus, who are you? I mean, she runs back to the village, calls the villagers and tells them, come and see this person who tells me something about my life. All these people, something in their life changed when they encountered Jesus. Another person is a soldier. When Jesus had just died, this soldier remains behind and he recounts the events of that day. And something he says is that truly this was the son of God. What changed for him to realize that? You know, the person they just killed together with his, with his friends is truly the son of God. When the Bible says that if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. He's a new creation because of the word that has come into this person's life. And because the Bible tells us that the word of God is alive and sharper than any two-edged sword. And this word begins transforming this person. Now, for these people to, to change, something must happen. But before you even share what must happen for uh, for, for these people to experience transformation. I want to share a few areas in which our lives as believers would change if we only, you know, allowed the word of God to transform us. Number one is our motives and our desires. You know, the things we do and the things we desire, we eventually ask ourselves, why am I doing what I am doing? What is the motive of what I am doing? Why do I desire these things? For what sake? Our character changes. You know, the Bible tells us in Galatians chapter 5, chapter 5 that this, uh, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy. You know, the work of the Spirit in us results in the, uh, the, the things mentioned in the Bible. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, and all those things there. Our perspective changes, you know. The same way we looked at the world before we, I mean, when we looked at the world before we received Christ. When Christ enters your life and you become a believer, you don't look at the world the same way. You know, Romans chapter 12 says us that um, let us not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but we are transformed by the renewing of our minds because the word of God enters our minds and starts changing how we look at life and how we perceive life. We do not react to the world and to the events of this world the same way other people who do not have Christ would react. Something else changes is our purpose. I mentioned Paul. Look at his purpose before he met Christ and after he met Christ. When we experience the regeneration that Christ brings through his spirit, our purpose changes. We do not live for ourselves but for him. Another thing that changes is our relationships. You know, because of Christ, we would, we would have better marriages, we would have better friendships, and better you know, families because something in us has changed. Now, for all these things to change, for, uh, for us to be in the list of uh, the people I've mentioned, Paul, Zacchaeus, the thief on the cross, the soldier, the woman at the well, and all these people that lives, that, whose lives changed because of their encounter with God or with, with the word of God, something must happen. The Bible says in Luke chapter 6, verse 46 to 49, why do you call me Lord and you do not do the things that I command? And Jesus gives an analogy, says, the one who hears his words and puts them into practice is like a man who built his house on solid lock foundation. And he says, the one who hears my words and does not put them into practice is like a man who builds a house, but he digs a very shallow foundation and builds his house there. And for these two men, both cases, a storm comes, but the first person who built this house on a very solid, solid lock foundation, his house stands firm. The other one, the Bible de describes his house. He says the destruction was complete. For us to change our lives, for us to experience this transformation, we must submit ourselves to the authority of the word. The word of God must have an authority over our lives. We must 
do what the word of God says, like James says. Not merely just listening to the word of God, but do what it says. When we do what the word of God says concerning our families, our families are better. When we do what the word of God says concerning our jobs and, and how we look at work, we are better workers. When we do what the word of God says concerning loving one another, our relationships improve. The Bible says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. Because Christ comes with new principles, with a new way of doing things, with new thoughts, with new ideas. And when you put this into practice, is when we begin seeing transformation. My question for you today is, have you seen your life changed? And what areas has your life uh, changed? And if your life has not changed, why has your life not changed? And the reason is this, like I've mentioned, you have not given your life to the word of God. You have not submitted to the authority of the, of the word of God. Surely if you do that, when you do what the word of God commands and says, you will begin seeing this transformation. The Bible says, for us to see transformation in our lives, we need to submit to the word of God and do what the word of God says. And Jesus says that you are my friends if you do what I command you to do. You know, the things you said concerning our families, our relationships, our work, and anything that concerns even our character, do those things, and you'll clearly see a transformation. With that, my friends, I want to pray for us, and I hope and uh, and I pray and hope that you will put this word into practice. Let us pray together. Father, I pray that just as this verse has uh, um, reminded us that if anyone is in Christ, is a new creation. I pray that for anyone who has listened to this word, Lord, we will humble ourselves and submit to the authority of your word and allow your word to change how we relate, to change our character, to change our perspective, to change our motives and our desires. And I pray that, Lord, we will begin to see this transformation that you bring through your word in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you and have a wonderful week.